Slim Dog Science with me, Caleb Fleming. Subscribe, like, comment, and hit that bell. What's up, science lovers? Welcome to Flim Dog Science, where we explore simple complexities that make the world more wonderful. If we haven't met, I'm Caleb Fleming. Today, we're going to explore how sodium hydroxide gets hot, boiling, and a little singy as we add water, aluminum, and ignite the products. Along the way, I'll explain what I think's going on. Your job is to explain down in those comments how I can improve my thinking. Before we go on, consider this question. Should I do this at home? Good question. No. But I'll be really safe. Cool. No. If you do this at home, you'll be burned, <laughs> scarred, blinded, ah! baked via explosion. So strongly consider never doing this at home. What are we actually looking at today? Molarity solutions, ionic bond association in water, instability of ions and how water stabilizes them, reorganization of water around sodium hydroxide called hydration, energy flow, exothermic heat release, once, twice, three times, concentration, temperature, and surface area effects on reaction rates, combustion, a little, because having things explode sometimes is fun. Why are we doing all this stuff? Because reactions are way more awesome when we look at the slightly bigger picture. But here's the thing, we're only looking at a small piece of the picture. What are we actually gonna do today? Great question. First, we're gonna drop sodium hydroxide in water, measure the temperature, and then I'll explain it. Then you start wondering, how'd you make that sodium hydroxide solution? So then I give you the quickest molarity and concentration lesson of your life, looking at how to make 2.5, 5, and 7 molar solution. Then we drop in half a gram of aluminum into three beakers of different concentrations with the same surface area of aluminum exposed. One beaker gets a lower surface area exposure by crumpling the aluminum into a little ball, one beaker's on ice. We measure the reaction rates by how quickly they fill up balloons at the top. Then I explain what we saw. Then I light the balloons on fire. Then I explain what we see. Then I say bye. Maybe you subscribe. Then the only thing you don't do is try this at home. Let's go measure out 5, 10, and 15 grams of sodium hydroxide. I'll be using Pure Live. Right there, that's going to go in five different Erlenmeyer flasks with a little less than 50 milliliters of water in each one. And that's going to make us our 2.55 and 7.5 molar solutions of sodium hydroxide. Look at our results now. That Every single time that I do that, it's so crazy. It's so cool to me that it gets hot. I never expected that the first time I did it. I'd never done it before till just recently. And look at, look at what we got. 2.5 molar with five grams heated up to 37 degrees Celsius. Five molar with 10 grams heated up to 52 degrees Celsius. Or with 15 grams heated up to 66 degrees Celsius. It's just crazy. It gets so hot. Like it actually was hurting my hands in these couple because it got so hot. Not so much. That one was just hot. This one was like really hot. And then I just started thinking, man, table salt is an ionic compound too. When I put table salt in water, does it start boiling? Do I worry about that? Let's try. Salt water. Glasses for safety. Our temperature currently is 21 and a half degrees. Yes, 21 and a half degrees. Now let's add salt. Could somebody pass the salt, please? Hello. I'm not even gonna measure. I'm just gonna dump it in using perfect chemistry technique. 21 and a half degrees. What? You see that? What temperature are we at? 20 degrees. It just went down a degree and a half. We just had sodium hydroxide get hotter and we got salt, which is an ionic compound, get colder. Ah! I don't even have time to talk about table salt right now, but one ionic compound tends to make the water way hotter. Another ionic compound makes the water colder. Crazy, crazy world we live in. What I need to do right now is explain why sodium hydroxide made this solution get hotter. Mm -hmm. 
Do you agree with me? Do you think that's why sodium hydroxide and water got so much hotter while sodium chloride got so much colder? If you disagree, put that down in the comments. And if I need to add something, put that down in the comments and add why sodium chloride got cold. Hey, Flim Dog, how'd you know what mass of sodium hydroxide to put in those beakers? Well, that's a really good question. In the Erlenmeyer flask. <laughs> Uh, it's just me here. That's a really good question and poignant since I'm going to give you the fastest molarity lesson of your life right now. With those things in mind, explain down in the comments why you think the 7.5 got the hottest and the 2.5 molar didn't get as hot. Now I need to cut five half gram pieces of aluminum. I'm going to be using regular aluminum foil. And I'll weigh those out right now. I got my five pieces of half gram aluminum now. Copper foil. Go fish. Let me fold them so that they fit inside our flask. The aluminum has now been folded into these equal sized pieces. One piece is going to go into each one of our flasks. On top of the flask, we're going to put a balloon that's color coded to that flask. On the 2.5 molar flask, we're going to put green balloons. This 2.5 molar flask is going to have our reduced surface area aluminum ball. This 2.5 molar flask is going to be surrounded by ice. How fast the balloon fills up with some kind of gas is going to dictate how fast the reaction is taking place. So now what you need to do is make your hypothesis about which flask is going to fill up the fastest. Isn't that cool? We still have the reaction going on, so I'm gonna leave on my goggles. But look, all three of our room temperature ones that weren't crumpled all had the aluminum totally dissolved. Now we have this black leftover stuff we'll have to look at in our notes. But they're all about the same size. Our crumpled ball here that had the reduced surface area, it's still going. My guess is by the time it's done, It'll be about the same size also. And this one here that looks like nothing's happening, it actually has a few little tiny bubbles that are going on. Let me show you those. Let me show you one more thing about this experiment. You probably noticed that inside the flask it was bubbling and you're like, was that, well it's boiling, but is it getting hot? Because we can boil water at room temperature um, under the right circumstances. What I'm gonna do right now is put in some aluminum, put in a thermometer and let you see what happens to the temperature once those things are together. So I'll fold it just like I did before. Drop it in. It's room, just over room temperature to start. And watch this thermometer. So we're 40 now. It wasn't about 25. Ooh, it's really boiling. So 50. Right around the aluminum. Let's see what temperature it is. We'll put it right on there. Mid 50s now, 55, 56. So we saw that it got hotter. We'll use that when we're explaining in our notes. Let's jump over to those now and explain what all happened. Hopefully all of that about reaction rates kind of helps bring things together now with what we've seen. Look at this now that we've come back. The crumpled up one that had the reduced surface area, it's now done. So let's make that into a balloon. 
and notice our cold one. It's not as if the reaction's not happening, it's just going a lot slower. We can see it's starting to fill up now too. If you have any extra thoughts about reaction rates and aluminum reacting with uh, hydroxide, put those down in the comments. That is a really, really cool, complicated process. Um, we could do a lot of videos about that particular reaction. We're taking a little break from sodium hydroxide now and we're gonna do a little work by igniting these balloons. We're gonna see about combustion. So the first one, let's look at this one. And as a comparison, watch when I blow up a balloon. So there's a balloon I just blew up with the air in my lungs. Now let's do that again with another balloon. One from our experiment. Before we do, what do you think's in this balloon? We just saw what happens when I light one on fire with the air from my lungs. What's gonna happen when we light this balloon on fire? Take a moment and write down your thoughts. Hold on. Did you see that? That was a major explosion right there. I'm gonna try it in slow motion right now so we can see what happens at a few more frames per second. One of our balloon pieces shot across the room, melted over here. Let's do one last fun one. We'll do a little double trouble. I'm gonna put them right beside each other. We'll see if one will chain react with the other one. Did you see that balloon go flying over there? That's crazy. It didn't chain react with this one. That would have been a little more fun, but maybe we can figure something out in the future. Maybe if this one ever finishes, we can use that. What we need to do right now though, is explain what was the combustion process inside this balloon. So if you know something or find out something about this experiment, please come back and jot that down in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. And lastly, if this was something that was enjoyable for you, consider subscribing. Or if you learned a little bit, consider subscribing. And then next week, we can try to do it again. Still going. Hmm.